Your Excellencies, my parliamentary colleagues, former Prime Minister, uh, all the members of the judging panel and all the members of the diplomatic corps and most especially the most dear distinguished guests tonight uh, indeed are our hosts in Joseph and Angela. Uh, it's a real privilege to be here and I think I, of the 35 years, I've probably been here for 20 of them. Uh, and as I look at that video, uh, there's a few of us who've been here more than once. Uh, none of us look a day older, but we keep coming back for one very simple reason. Tonight, we celebrate the best of modern Australia. That's what this event celebrates this evening and every year. There are always a range of stories and you look through the program and you see businesses ranging from health services, uh, recycling and environmental services, a whole range of, of different sorts of businesses that people have taken. But they all have a couple of features in common. They all have involved risk, whether it's a First Nations business or somebody who has only recently made Australia their home. They all involve taking risk. The second thing is they have all involved success, success for those businesses. The third is for every single one of them, they've employed and given security to other Australians, other Australians who haven't taken that exact risk, but who have offered their labour and have been given dignity at work because of the vision of the business leaders who are here tonight. They provided services to the nation and to other businesses, but most importantly, when we talk about who might win, we already know for every one of the businesses we celebrate tonight, the nation has won and the nation has won big time. And to each and every one of those businesses, do understand the bipartisan nature of tonight, the number of members of parliament and even former prime ministers who keep coming back, come back because we know one simple truth. The nation is better because of you. And that's why we keep coming here. I want to remind when we, Joseph referred to what we can pass on to the next generation. And Joseph referred to success putting him in a situation where he can't provide the next generation with exactly what he arrived with in terms of the empty suitcase. But those of us who've read Joseph's book know that the suitcase wasn't truly empty. It was a suitcase full of dreams. And that suitcase full of dreams is able to be passed on to the next generation. And the other great gift that gets passed on to the next generation is the gift of language. While English is the dominant language in Australia and we want everybody to be able to have those English skills, it is also the case that anyone who has the gift of more than one language knows too well that the concept of translation is not really true. There's not a matching word in English for every other language and there are some ideas, beliefs, place names, concepts that only exist in the language of your heritage. I was pleased earlier this year that we made significant investments in First Nations languages so that we can finally turn the corner from them being languages that have been increasingly disappearing to languages that have a history right back to the first sunrise on this land that will indeed always be there and over time will now start to grow again. And I also am so pleased that the gift that gets passed on to the next generation by many people in this room is to make sure that more and more Australians are bilingual, that the language of your heritage is a wonderful gift to your children and a wonderful gift to the nation. And to continue to pass that on delivers what was described in the video by former Prime Minister Rudd as making sure that you are our bridge to the rest of the world, but also making sure that all the beauty, the poetry and the concepts that exist in your, the language of your heritage can forever live in Australia too. I am always struck by when I go to events where there is a welcome at the start by a First Nations elder. And you can think of all the different things that might be said given the history and the word and moment of generosity we keep receiving 
is the word welcome. It's an extraordinary level of generosity and something that's not lost on us. I'm also conscious that there's a few people here who had previously held the portfolio that I hold, both Leader of the Opposition, Peter Dutton, uh, and former Prime Minister Scott Morrison have been ministers for citizenship. And one of the great honours in that role is that you get to determine what are the words that someone will hear immediately before they become an Australian citizen. I've had the privilege of being able to do that twice. Uh, once when I held the job in 2013 before Scott bundled me out of it, and then, and then more recently after the last reshuffle. I've tried to reciprocate that concept that we get from First Nations welcomes, so that now every time when people become Australian citizens, they get told two things. First of all, they get told that Australia is about to become a better nation because of them. That their story, history and journey becomes part of Australia's story too, and we're better for it. And secondly, to offer them the welcome that has that history on this land back to the first sunrise and conclude the message with the words, welcome home. For each and every one of the people we celebrate tonight, you are welcome and have welcomed so much into this country. We are better economically because of you. We are better as a nation because of you. And tonight we are so proud to join with the board, to join with Joseph Asif and all the inspiration that brings us here tonight and to celebrate you. To each and every one of you, Australia says thank you.